It's September 2nd. It's time for Watcher Weekly. Oh, what? No! It's time for Watcher Weekly. I was distracted because someone was drilling in my somewhere. And well, then you just jump in there and do Whatever. it. Whatever, you snooze, you lose, big feet. Welcome to Watcher Weekly, presented by Breather, a show where we kick back, chat, and answer your guys' questions to the best of our ability. As you always, guys. if you guys would like to... <laughs> what the fuck? Got you again, man. Snorlax always, over there. If you'd like to <laughs> leave a question for a future episode, swing by the C tab on youtube.com slash... He's got the yips. He's got, got the, the yips. yips. Now, we are watcher. We are watcher. We are watcher. Facebook.com slash watcher entertainment. We are watcher.tumblr.com. Patreon.com slash watcher. Uh, YouTube.com right. slash watcher podcasts. Today, we're uh, going to have a fun little office tour. I've actually really missed the office. So I wanted to drop by, check it out, see how it's looking. I heard this. You know what, though, there. man? It's all fucked up with my puppets. Katie, Katie and I basically lived there for like three weeks in the middle of June. Yeah, it was June. I walked in recently to grab something from the office and it looked like a madman's den. Yeah, it's, uh, it was pretty nice. Just puppet bodies, puppet, puppet corpses just strewn all over the office. Yeah, it was, it, was, a, it was a disaster. Is the professor paying rent at the office right now? Because he's staying there, right? Yeah, I think he wrote you a little tiny check for some jelly beans. So keep an eye out for that. It's very small, so it's kind of hard to find, but I'm sure it's somewhere in the office. All right, well, yeah, we got a little office tour. Uh, let's let's hit up the chill zone, though, for a bit. I was telling uh, Ryan recently that I um, I have a PSVR, and there's a game on there called Dreams, and someone did a pretty impressive recreation of Disneyland. So during my quarantine times, every now and then, I jack into the system and go visit uh, sunny Anaheim, California. And it's very scary because obviously in the realm of VR, anything is possible. So not only are you walking around Disneyland, but Mickey Mouse will be there and he'll be like, oh, hi, welcome to my park. That sounds horrifying. And then Goofy will be there like, you know. I, I, I don't like any of that. I don't like any half measures. And I just then, need to be and, in the park and, and I can't be. Well, but Ryan Minnie is there too. And she's like, uh, hi, well, have you met my boyfriend? He is a, a movie star. You know? Are they boyfriend, girlfriend? Oh, big time. They're husband oh. and wife. Are they yeah, married? I thought they were, I thought they were married. They're both, their last name is Mouse. Oh, I thought that's just cause they're mice. Anyways, I coped it with by making a stupid podcast. You go into your little VR land, I talk about it with my friends. That's that. Check it out. Subscribe. The, ha the saddest podcast on earth. At saddest pod. At saddest pod. Uh, some quick announcements before we get into questions. Puppet History episode four airing this week. Who do we have this week? Oh, Kristen Chirico to talk about a very eventful Olympics that actually was not on the short list of episodes, but Stephen Lim, after our brainstorm, was like, hey, have you ever heard of these? And he sent me a link and I was like, oh, we gotta work this into the season. I mentioned this last week and the week prior, but we are rolling out some fun newsletters to give you some additional educational content about each week's episode. If you wanna sign up for those directly from our lead researcher this season, Carrie Keppel, head on over to watcherentertainment.com slash enroll dash now. Also, we got some fun PU merch over at the store. Anyway, let's answer some questions, huh? Yeah. All right, these are from the C tab. And this comes from oh our boy. friend. <laughs> I love it. Medina. If you could create your own haunted location at an amusement park, what would be a must to include in it? Ooh, man. I think a mirror maze is always fun. Uh, that can add some spookiness to it. You probably want some creepy animatronics. I think I'm done. Anyways, what's yours? <laughs> uh, I was thinking more like laundry you left in the washer after four days, that a crack in your gross. apartment that uh, uh, spiders come out of. Are you just describing your own apartment? Describing things that would haunt me. Stephen Lim lives a scary life. These are sort of domestic hauntings that you're talking about here. <laughs> or, or a slanted floor. Oh my goodness. The laundry that hasn't been done. Spiders that are crawling out of a crack in a wall. Maybe they bite you. Uh, a, a shelf with two teacups on it. A slanted uh, floor. A window. A slanted floor is pretty haunted, man. I see what's going on here and I love it. You know what I put in there? A big old pit. Like a fire pit or like a ball pit? Just a pit. Just a pit? Like an armpit? What's in the pit? Just a big old pit. And you're walking through the haunt thing and you're like, everything's going for, whoa! You fall into a pit. And then the haunted house becomes, well, how are you gonna get out of this pit? I'd put a hallway that is 200 feet long, okay. lined shoulder to shoulder 
with creepy mimes. They're like this. Love that. Love that. I've always thought that it would be really upsetting, and I've looked online to, to, to find videos of this. I've never, ever found one. I always think it'd be very upsetting to see a mime throwing up because, like, if maybe the mime's in the middle of a performance, mime vomits, because you make noises when you vomit uncontrollably. So to see a mime sort of against his will, just being like, Rah! it's not something, it's, it's very scary. Would handkerchiefs come out of his mouth? <laughs> yes, and, vo and vomit. This isn't really much, I guess it is a question, it's more of a statement. Uh, Nick Lawrence says, if Shane wants to know what he's going to look like in 20-ish years, Google Ralph Innocent. Oh, I've heard this for a very long time. When I was in high school, me and my friends were very into The Office UK, and my friends would, anytime he was on screen, they're like, man, you look just like Finchie. I think for a while, like in college, when you would have like, oh, my favorite movie is like your Facebook profile picture. I had Finchie as my Facebook profile picture oh. for a little bit there. Did anybody even notice it wasn't you? No, I mean, frankly, if you look at some shots of him from the UK office, it really, especially with now that I have like a mustache here and there, it's pretty, it's pretty alarming. Oh, he really does look so much more like you even. Yeah, when he's younger. It's it's honestly scary how much <laughs> it you really look like is. this guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if in the UK he was in more stuff, but I know in the US he's he's never been like a huge actor, but then The Witch came out and that was a pretty big movie. And that's when people started, hey, you really look like him. A big moment for me a few weeks back is that someone tweeted at him once again. I think he responded and was like, leave the poor lad alone or something. He doesn't want to he hear that he looks like a 40 year old or something like that. Yeah. What he said. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Internet. Have you ever seen Shane Madea and Ralph Innocent in the same room at the same time? That's a good oh. question. The ruse is over, bud. We get it. You're Ralph Innocent. Give it up. All right. I am. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shane Madea and I'm Ralph Innocent. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I got one from Carly Griffin. Halloween is probably canceled this year which sucks a big old butt as it's my favorite holiday. But if it wasn't, yeah, it what costume would each of you pick this year? Bonus question for Shane, what would the professor dress up as? Here's the thing, Halloween is canceled, but I think we can all celebrate Halloween safely from our homes. On the I think you could dress up and take pictures and you know show off your costumes via Zoom or you yeah, know, those things. Yeah, but isn't trick-or-treating can it be done safely? Like if you stand back with like a oh, big, like a big bag, right? Mm, we're just like all playing. I don't like know about beer that. pong. Nah, I don't right. know. I know, I know you yeah. love the idea of throwing beer pong. What are you talking about? You, these are like three year olds. What are you talking? About? <laughs> okay, not not actually playing beer pong, but like throwing bags of candy at people's little hoops. There. Still, though, you would have the contact of them touching the candy and then having the adults then touch the candy and send it back to them. It just feels like a super spreader scenario. I would recommend no one trick or treat. However. Take as many photos as you want from your home. And yeah, because also, right, yeah. I just thought about it. Sorry, I thought about it for a second. And yeah, you're right. We well, because also, that's a slippery slope here, because if kids are going around trick-or-treating, well, one, that's a bad idea to begin with. Two, people are going to be like, yeah, I guess Halloween's happening this year, huh? Let's have a party, bro. Yeah, don't uh, do it's it. bad. No, stay yeah, home. All right, make a mask out of paper mache. Papier mache. Papier mache. Oh. Mache. Uh, and have a... Have a good old time. Eat some candy. Candy's cheap. What would your costume be, though? Don't think I've dressed up in like two years now. You know who I would be? I've been. This kind of came and went with a lot of without much fanfare. But uh, recently, I've been rethinking again about the Dark Crystal series, of which I was a huge fan. It's really good. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. a character in there named Hup. He has a spoon. He has a wooden spoon that he beats people with. Hup is great. I'm not such a big Hup fan, and I don't think people talk about Hup enough. My ideas seem to center around a, a main character and an inanimate object. So I would, uh, in the, uh, maybe I would be a cliff. That's and good. And Mari would dress up as Mufasa. Or I would be, uh, she would dress up as Indiana Jones and I'd be a boulder, something like that. You know what would uh, be good? To be Ben Solo, don't talk to anybody, show up to a party for two minutes and then leave. Oh, that's my dream. I thought you were gonna say one of us is Ben Solo and the other one is dead Han Solo. <laughs> ben! Ben! <laughs> Steven, what about you? Would you be a large piece of food? Leftovers? Uh, probably Cut yourself tinfoil? This year, to honor the cat that I live with, maybe I'd just be Simba. You know. It's not bad. I don't know. Just, I've just, never, I didn't, do people do that? Dress up as their own pets? It's Halloween, you can do whatever you want. That's true, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, I'm not the Halloween police. Ooh, that's a good idea for a pilot. Hang on a sec. Halloween police, that is a good idea, actually. You should be the Halloween okay. police, the costume police. It is uh, illegal to pretend to be a, a cop, so don't do that. Maybe not yet, maybe don't do that. <laughs> um, next question. This is Let's from uh, 
Yungi biased Charmander. Uh, can y'all twerk? Not as in you have to do it on camera, but more of do y'all know how to do it? I do not. No. I'm not. <laughs> have you tried? I feel like maybe I've tried. Uh, we've we've discussed on Unsolved before how uh, one of my nicknames is Shane Paper Ass Day because it's sort of like a just a sheet of paper back there. Just a perfect line. Yeah. Purely vertical. Uh, me twerking look, probably looks like a, a doggy flap on a door going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and Steven, any any verdict on you on that one? Uh, I certainly tried. Okay, uh, that's why. But I, that's really what is, I wanted to know. I mean, like I I, I can't figure out the um, the muscle back there that that I'm supposed to engage. Maybe I don't have it, but there's like I don't have very mobile hips, is what yeah. it is. I think. Moving on, we have a fun segment this week. As uh, Stephen said, you took a fun tour of the office, which we had meant to do this when the office was full, and I actually shot one uh, at some point, but everyone had kind of left, and I was very low energy. Uh, in fact, I can show you a clip from my tour just now very briefly so you can see how much it sucks. Hi everybody, it's time for a tour of the Watcher office. What are you doing? Nothing. Are you leaving? I did it nearly, I guess. 5.42. Let's start over here. Wait, I'm gonna change it to wide lens. Oh, okay. Are you gonna start? All right. Here? Here's Ryan's desk, it's filthy. Mine is a little less filthy. Apparently it can kill you. What? Uh, okay. Uh, we'll see you later. Yeah, very bad. That's a pretty shitty video. Yeah. <laughs> so, what clip are we yeah. rolling right now, Steven? Okay, got don't it. Worry. Got it. Don't worry. Don't worry. There's a disturbing um, clip. Now we've hyped up how bad our office videos were. Now it's your right. turn to really take the baton and well, just run over that finish line with this bad boy, baby. So there's a bit too much hype for this. So no, I'm absolutely not. This could be the most incredible office tour. Bring, bring down the hype meter. And I'm uh, turning it up. I can't stop. Which I'm, I'm sure I'll talk about when we actually. Uh, uh, no, I can't stop. It keeps going up. <laughs> Welcome to the Watcher Office Tour 2020. It's a beautiful space as you can see behind me. Before the pandemic, we were you know hustling and bustling here, and we just had to work from home for the past few months. Big shout out to Brittany Lee. She is the person who synthesized a lot of our ideas, uh, put together the space, built most of it actually. Anyway, let's get to it. Behind the scenes of the office space. All right, so the very first thing I'll show you all is the entranceway. Yes, very exciting, gray door. But it leads into this wonderful mural slash living room slash like open area. And we covered this in Making Watcher, by the way. So if you haven't watched that, check it out. Uh, this mural was painted by our good friend, our investor, Kent. He is an incredible muralist as well as the founder of a company called Neurogum. So I really love the opening of here. And there's a lot of puppets over there I can't show. Shane made me promise not to show them. And usually that actually that table isn't there. And it's actually where we shot Watcher Weekly before the pandemic. All right, so the next thing I wanna share with you all is the seating arrangement. And it's pretty funny because when we first had it together, it felt like the first day of school, like when you're going to lunch and you don't know who you're gonna eat lunch with, uh, who your posse is gonna be. This island right here is four desks and right here is uh, Shane back there. Ryan's right here. Uh, I'm over here and Katie LeBlanc is right here. So moving over from this area, which is where we sit, over to the next area. This is where the editors and Brittany sit. So this is Anthony's desk. This is lovely plant, as you can see. I know a lot of you've been concerned about our plants at the office. Don't worry. Anthony comes in once a week, waters them, so we're still good. Uh, and Brittany usually sits next to him right here, but the desk is being used for puppet theater. And then we have Josh. We have Lauren, and then over here is our good friend, Steven Castro. One thing I missed while we were in the main area, by the way, this is actually where we keep all of our gear here. You can see, so it's like our dolly, we have our cameras down there, we have some wires and everything. So Brittany put this whole thing together. She organized this space, um, which is not easy. And also I am very picky about the way that we organize stuff. You can see we have these string lights. At one point, Anthony was like, we need string lights. And so Brittany was like, all right, let's go get some string lights. Check it out, man. And now moving on to the kitchen area. By the way, I'm like sweaty right now because the AC doesn't work in this place. So if I look like I'm glossy or oily, that's why it's 88 degrees in here. Thanks right down here, I think. Yep, oh, we need to throw some of those out. I don't know if you guys all remember this, but this was our slogan early on. Well, not our slogan, this was Ryan's mantra. So happy it's Thursday, AKA the S word. Very funny, haha. Ha. I have no idea why this is written here, but this has been here since probably February. All that stuff that we do on the mini management side is done by Anthony. He does an amazing job. I don't have to worry about it, which is great. 
but um, it's very complicated. We're almost done with our tour today, but I do want to share with you a few other little accents of the space. Um, first of all are the soda bottles, as you probably remember from our soda episode. And there's some puppets over there that I'm not going to show you. Again, not allowed to, so sorry. This is Ryan's dream come true. Uh, he, he brought his old dorm room into our office space. Look! These are from uh, Target. Wait, when did these expire? April 6, 2020. I'm just gonna throw these out. The last question that a lot of you ask is how are the office plants doing? I know you're very concerned and thank you for that. I'm doing great. First up, we got this guy over here. Um, wow, it's looking very healthy actually. I don't think we have a name for any of these plants, but you can feel free to vote on how you would want to name them. And then we have Katie's plant, which is doing great. It's beautiful. This is my plant right here, which I chose it because, well, it's wild, just like me. But moving on to this plant, which I believe is Shane's. This is the one that was severed by Ryan's table, but it's doing quite well for itself nowadays. And last but not least, we have this cutie pie. I forgot to mention, which is our big one in the corner over here. Looks like it's doing okay. Some of the leaves over there are a little bit burnt, but these are tough times, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, so that was our thrilling tour of the office, which I have now found out uh, is not as exciting as I once thought it was, but as you can see, it's a small space, but we make with it what we can. And honestly, I just I just love this place so much. I miss working out at this, this office. I miss seeing my coworkers every day. I can't wait for the day when we can all come back here. But until then, we will remain safe over here at Watcher. You all at home, please stay safe and uh, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Wasn't that wow. lovely? Holy I miss the office. Oh, I cry every time I see it. I shed a tear. Do you remember the wall? Do you have te show me the tears? Wait, Can you find try command? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm close. I mean, I'm watering. I'm watering. I think if I had another four and a half minutes, I could do it. But anyways, let's move on to uh, some shout outs here. We're going to thank all of you guys on Patreon. I'll take it away first, folks. A big thank you to Abby Shears. An equally large thank you to Alexander Gaudi. And who can forget Alina Vershanina? Allie, the singular Allie. Amanda Komotsos? Komotsos? I'm really bad at names this week. Becca, Brianna, Cassie, we thank you. And I'll throw one more in here because it's got an umlaut in it and I think that's fun. Emma Hergberg. <laughs> I hope I good. pronounced that right. Thank you so much to India. Thank you to Justin, Joanna Eaton, thank you. Jordan Christopher Diamant, KG, uh, hey, Kelly, Har Kelly Harnett, thank you very much. Kristen Townsend, Leslie Wilmoth, Lily Kepner, and Liz. Thank you so much, Liz. Apparently there's a second Liz that we need to thank, so I'm gonna also thank Liz, oh, not freaky. to be confused with the prior Liz. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Lydia, uh, Lysander, or Lysander, uh, Maxfield Keegan, Megan, Megan Umosher, or Mosher, Mindy, Molly, well here's a fun name, thank you to Morgan Ironwolf, that is and cool. uh, Nicola A, of course, and who could forget, Nixie Plays. Thank you to all of you for the continued support. Yeah, and we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll see you on Watcher Weekly Plus. How about that? Thank you for watching this week, everybody. Tune in for Puppet History. It's a real barn burner, Kristen Chirico. It's gonna be a blast. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.